Hey everybody, Jason Cooper here from Kickstarted, uh, the feature film documentary that's coming out later this year and uh, tells the story of crowdfunding and real people who are following their dreams using platforms like Kickstarter. And today I uh, is another episode of Funded Friday where we talk to a creator in the midst of their crowdfunding campaign. Today we're joined by Scott McDonald, who is a principal at Luminati, and they are a collective in Denver. I'll let them tell you about that in a second. And they just launched a uh, really interesting crowdfunding campaign for a handheld smart case for your iPhone that basically turns it into a really powerful filmmaking tool, uh, and it's called the Luminati CS1. So Scott, why don't you uh, just quickly give us an overview of what the project is? Yeah, so... Um we had seen lots of people using their smartphones for video in the last few years, and the cameras are getting so incredible, uh, but the ergonomics are all wrong. So we sort of tapped into our love of old cameras and, and which ones were the best to hold and ergonomically correct. So what we did was we created sort of like a, it, you know, it's reminiscent of a Super 8 camera um, where you actually just load your iPhone in uh, as if you're loading film, and it turns it into a fully functioning and ergonomically correct video camera. And it's it's just such an interesting looking project, uh, and, and I'll put a link up here, but people should definitely check it out. And um, it's it's for me, it's one of those great examples of cool design projects that pop up on Kickstarter or other crowdfunding sites that you just don't see in stores. I'm curious. Where did the like where did the idea to do this sort of pop up from and how come you guys like just walk me through the process of oh wow that's something that we could do to like let's put it on Kickstarter. Sure, yeah. So, you know, when we started, we figured we're we're a group of filmmakers, right? So we make a lot of different commercials. And we were using our iPhones um, behind scenes and all that type of stuff to kind of create content that we would share with our followers. And uh, along that process, we thought of, like, well, hey, we could make these things way better, um, you know, for doing that. So we set out with the idea to just build ourselves a camera um, case kind of thing that was just for us. But then through the process, we showed so many people, everybody was into it. We kind of, you know, was gauging, gauging the interest. So we decided, all right, let's put it on a Kickstarter and see if it's a valid idea. Turns out people are pretty into it. So we're like, let's do this thing. Wow. So how, how long did that process take from ideation to now you're launched? So we went down a whole couple different roads for a period of time, had trials and tribulations and overcomes. And what, you know, originally we were doing it for Bolex lenses because we wanted to really be throwback. We bagged that idea. So in total, it's been about, I would say, eight months from ideation till now. And you, get, you guys have working prototypes as well. It's not just an idea. It's something that you actually built and have been using, correct? Absolutely, we do. We have working prototypes. Actually, I should just grab one really quick. Give me just a second. And just for the audience uh, who's watching now, we are they are um, just started their campaign. They are, uh, I think, 11 days to go, 858 backers, and have raised over one hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars against a seventy-five thousand dollar goal. So it's a project that, if you are watching this as of July thirty-first, you can go on and uh, and actually back that right now. So sorry about that. Let's so see it. Here's this prototype. So you actually take take the phone, stick it into the prototype here, and then we have an app. It's just a beta right now that you launch, which enables you to be able to see through a preview that it's actually projecting up in the corner of the screen. So it, it projects what the camera is seeing up top here, and the eyepiece covers it and uses a set of mirrors and magnification to bounce it into your eye. And then the trigger records with it. Yes, it's awesome. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of what it is. I, I can't believe that you guys came up with this idea in eight months, prototyped it, built a, an app for it, it's functioning. How did you do it so quickly and so effectively? Um, you know, I think that from being inside kind of the advertising world and things like that, we've got a lot of really great connections in both tech and engineering. So I think that enabled us to really 
get our team really focused and have a small team that was able to accomplish things very quickly. So um, I'm lucky enough to be partnered with a couple brilliant guys who, you know, just know how to do stuff, I guess, you know, so that's what it feels like at least. Well, it's uh, congratulations on that. And as I just mentioned, you guys are already funded, uh, have 11 days to go. Uh, let me ask you about the campaign. What was your approach to getting the word out about this product when you decided that you were ultimately going to launch it on Kickstarter? Sure. So it was important to us, and, and we kind of did a lot of research as far as crowdfunding coming into it. And the biggest thing that we saw was don't start your campaign right when you launch it. Just start it before, you know, show people what it is, look for some advertising beforehand and try to get some press beforehand. So we really started about a month prior to launching. We really hit, hit it hard to try to get um, media outlets to feature it, things like that, before we even launch. So we saw that that gaining traction as you're coming in ultimately leads for a better launch date and, and, and a bigger kind of curve at the beginning. Is there one sort of specific thing that you guys, in retrospect, did wrong or that you're like looking at already, like, well, maybe we could have approached that a little differently, just as a lesson for other people? Sure. So I think really think through your tiers that you're going to offer, say, on Kickstarter or, or whatever your platform may be. Um, we ran into some issues where we realized that the backers really went for the limited quantities and just it's got to be a psychological thing. So there's just, there's just a lot of thoughts that you need to put into it where we had a few tiers that kind of competed with each other, we think. So next time we would do it, we would really, really craft that out to imagine that you're a buyer, which which tiers you're interested in, and which ones seem like they might be kind of almost ripping you off or something like that. So so the tiers are kind of key, and we think that next time if we ever do one, um, we would really think through that a little bit better. Okay, I think that's that's some I've heard similar things in terms of uh, you know you guys had some early bird rewards that have sold out. Um, and a number of different packages because not only are you creating this thing, but you have lenses available for the project too. So there's a lot to it. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this then. You have 800 plus backers and have proven, I think, at least to yourselves that you guys are, you guys are obviously going to be making this thing, hopefully. Uh, what is your goal now that you know that you're going into production on it? What do you want this campaign to sort of be at at the end? And then where are your goals for the project after the campaign? How do you want to leverage the success from Kickstarter to do something else? Right. So we, um, yeah, you know, that's what we're kind of going through. Like what, what are our goals now? Number one thing for us is delivering a high quality product. You know, the last thing we want to do is disappoint backers and things like that. So we figure that 800 plus backers, if we can make those guys really, really happy and have an amazing product that we can give to them, that's our ticket to ultimate success in the future. Um, in terms of sort of innovation inside of our company and things like that, we have some ideas for a couple other cases. We definitely want to move to the six plus size. That's a plan. Um, we, you know, we have some ideas for maybe a powered case that involves battery and zooming and potentially waterproofing even too. So we have a lot of kind of innovation that we want to go forth. But the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we deliver on time and that it is a really quality product. Did you guys consider not doing this through Kickstarter and just launching it and creating it and trying to create something and selling it through more traditional outlets? We did. We did. And we think that that would have been completely possible. Um, but Kickstarter is – basically the coolest and biggest store in the world right now is the way that we saw it. And so for seeking validation reasons, we went through Kickstarter because it, it was probably the most fun way. And, and in reality, it's a great marketing tool, Kickstarter is. So that's kind of the way that we thought of it. We could have made this thing without it, but we're really happy we did a crowdfunding campaign. So one of the things that we come across a lot in talking to other creators is and now that you're funded, maybe you're having, you're not done with your campaign, but you're at least, you know, you, you know that you have to deliver on this thing. And you mentioned that that's your, your main goal. Are you worried at all or considering at all? Well, now I have to build this project with 800 or more people 
sort of looking over my shoulder or in my pocket while I do that. And are you planning to take any sort of special steps to include them, or how do you want to involve your backers once you're ready and beginning the uh, production process? Sure, of course. So um, first thing, we want to include them by um, releasing kind of beta apps to people so that they could kind of test it even before they get the case, because ultimately we want our app to work outside or inside or outside the case. So involving them in kind of the testing process of the app um, is pretty key for us to just get them involved. But as far as, yeah, kind of being, you know, worried about doing it, I mean, you know, we're ready to take it on, and I think we've built the right kind of team that uh, I'm confident that in the right time we can make this thing happen. Um, you know, we're really looking into our manufacturing right now and trying to figure out, do we make this thing in America or does it get made overseas and things like that? So that's going to be a big decision for us coming up because we do, if we can, we'd love to make it here because we kind of believe in the sort of the resurgence of American workforce and things like that. Um, but that's all up, you know, in the air right now. Interesting. One thing that you, you seem to have, a, you don't seem stressed, which is a good thing, but uh, a lot of people in your, in your shoes do get stressed, and I, I remember being very stressed running a campaign. Uh, what was, what, how are you managing your time? Is it something that you've enjoyed? You mentioned that you, you were like, bored to being part of this uh, Kickstarter experience, being in the store. Uh, what type of team do you have? Can you tell us a little bit about what the day-to-day -day of running the campaign has been like for you? Yeah, so, um, you know, I try to not get stressed out. It's hard not to at certain times, obviously. Um, you know, we put together a, a great team of, we've got an engineer on board full-time now, so that's important to us so that we can make adjustments to the hardware as we go. We're looking out there people to hire an iOS developer who can be on board in our offices every day working on the app and things like that. A, my right hand man, he's kind of the operations manager and we've worked together for years and years and years now so we're great friends and we know how to work together, we know each other's tick and things like that so we really think that, that if you have a good support system um, will help you through this thing. So I'm scared and stressed, but I've had so many really valuable people that I can balance my information off of that. So, yeah. Great. Well, I'm going to let you get back to it, but this has been really interesting. And for anyone who uh, is considering using their phone for filmmaking purposes, I encourage you to check out this S1 on Kickstarter. Um, and I'm sure you guys will probably make it available even after the campaign. Um, it's a really cool tool and I think uh, sort of one of probably what will be the first in a long line of, of applications and, and resources that filmmakers can use to turn their smartphones and devices into powerful filmmaking tools. Let me actually maybe I'll ask you that as to leave us off. Uh, as a filmmaker uh, yourself, what are you are, what are you most excited to do with this with the CS1 when it's finally like out there? What are you excited to see come back? Yeah, well, we really want to see what users are going to create. I mean, that's that's so cool to us. And I think the biggest thing is a lot of filmmakers up to this date, maybe pre DSLR era, are are very like against the idea of everybody being able to do it. And we're the complete opposite. We want to bring filmmaking to everyone because. The video is the future of the internet, and it's going to define the new era. So if we can bring that ability to your everyday person for a relatively affordable price, I can't imagine what kind of content people are going to create. It's going to be amazing. I agree, and I'm very excited. So again, thank you, Scott. It's been great. Uh, again, it's on Kickstarter right now, the Luminati CS1. Uh, and if you're interested in our film and want to hear more stories about crowdfunding uh, and the interesting people that are launching these awesome ideas and chasing their dreams, check out our film at kickstartedmovie.com or subscribe to this channel. Thanks a lot. See you next week.